and welcome to Conversations with Robin. As you know, we've been filming a number of shows on the Great Walk to Beijing, which is part of the fundraiser for the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Research and Wellness Centre. And on today's program, we have Dr. Richard Pastel, who is head of the Cancer... The Kimmel Cancer Centre. See, I told you I'd probably screw it up. <laughs> KCC. KCC. Thank you so much for being on the program with us, Richard. Now, you're based in America? Yes, I'm based in Philadelphia. Yep. And the structure of the cancer services there are a 22 hospital system, a mm -hmm. network of hospitals, and they go into New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania, and we're situated in Philadelphia. Okay, and you were invited to come on the walk by Olivia or by the Austin Centre? Who asked you to come along? Uh, Olivia, actually. Yeah? Yeah. What's your connection with Olivia? Well, she's extraordinary, isn't she? Uh, Absolutely. Well, we, we met in, uh, at a... At a, at a dinner and we were talking about an idea and the idea related to wellness, wellness for our patients mm -hmm. and uh, we got together a, a concert that she took, which she led uh, in Philadelphia a night with Olivia Newton-John and it was just extraordinary and the idea really is to bring global awareness about cancer mm -hmm. and globally the importance of wellness in cancer. Now, I think a lot of people you know, everybody sooner or later is affected by cancer. Um, a lot of people think of it as a war with cancer. They see, you know, cancer has been here since prehistoric times. Yep. It's been in fossils of prehistoric animals. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's a, an enemy. People right. see it as an enemy yep. that yeah. has, you know, takes no quarter, kills indiscriminately, mm -hmm. tortures people before it kills them. Mm. Um, and infiltrate silently into our lives. So people see this as a, as a war, if you like, between cancer and humans. Yeah. Um, but we like to think of it in a, a more balanced way that, in fact, we, ha we have the ability to not only provide support for patients and their families, to return patients to a sense of thriving, not surviving, mm -hmm. but also people, help people to harness their own ability to, to, f to kill cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it is actually quite surprising, but I think empowering for people to realise that there are a number of cancers that appear and are, are really quite substantial within our bodies and they then disappear. Mm -hmm. And this is very well described that people can have a cancer and without any treatment, their own bodies are able to, to, to kill those cancers. It's like a spontaneous healing. Spontaneous healing. We call it spontaneous remission. And that occurs for melanoma, mm -hmm. a, a disease mainly in kids called neuroblastoma, uh, kidney cancer, a type of cancer of the uterus <coughs> called choriocarcinoma, and teratomas. <coughs> so these five types of cancers have been well described to appear and then completely disappear. And this, I think, reflects our own personal power, our own ability to, to eradicate cancer. And we'd like to help people mobilise that during the course of their lives in preventing to some degree disease but also empowering them during the course of their disease. Mm. Well I think also it's, it is, you know, you and I spoke about this before the filming, it's also the language we use because mm -hmm. for so many people they hear the cancer word, word and they go, oh, it's a death sentence. And I think a lot of that has been brought about by the terminology and, and I guess it wasn't that long ago for a lot of different forms of cancer, people did die from it. Mm -hmm. But it's not the case anymore, is it? You know, what's happening out there now? Well, I think... Now, the good news. Yeah, well, I mean, the good news is that the, the deaths uh, from the disease have uh, decreased substantially, particularly for, for children's cancers. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really are winning in this fight mm -hmm. against the disease. Um, and I, I think what's most important to me is we've developed a lot of programs to maintain the, the health both uh, spiritual as well as physical health of patients who are affected with this disease. And that, I think, has been another very major transition. It's so important that, you know, in the United States, for example, there are uh, 12 million cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. There are probably about that number of people who have cancer and don't know it. In China, right now, it's the second commonest cause of death, both in the urban and rural environment. So there are a lot of people in the developed world and there are a lot of patients also in the developing world who have cancer and don't know it. So what we'd like to do is pay attention to improving the, the quality of life for people. Um, 
A lot of people when they're diagnosed with cancer, even though their disease is in remission, they have this sort of sense of a monkey on their back watching them every day when they wake up, will this disease come back? Yeah. And we'd like to open up people's minds to the idea that they can live in a more vigorous way. And a more positive thought thought process way, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. And I actually think we're in, I think of part of our responsibilities as cancer doctors, uh, we're in the reconstruction business. Mm -hmm. um, when people are diagnosed with cancer, their, their life is shattered. You know, the reality that they know has changed. But we like to put the pieces back together in a better way. And many of these therapies that we've you know, developed and share with our patients, art therapy, music therapy, poetry therapy, um, bring people's pieces back together, sometimes in a much stronger way, and their lives are much more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. What I've always tried to do in the last 20 or odd years that I've been involved in this field is to uh, always walk in the footsteps of uh, my patients um, and actually always imagine that this were my own parents. Uh, uh, Robin, as you know, both, both my parents died of cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was a uh, cancer surgeon, my mother was a nurse, and uh, initially I think I responded by being angry about this. Um, but I think, you know, I would have loved to have them seen the sort of things we're doing and have them part of you know, my life, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. And I've lost friends since I was quite young with, with cancer. But I think turning that into a much more positive energy, uh, making a difference, changing the lives of others, so they can live in a very fulfilling way is uh, perhaps the most important part of the mission that we can have. Mm. So I hope that not only can people who are diagnosed with cancer be brought into a new sort of state of wellness, of new wholeness, but also buddy up with others to help them in that sort of transition, because we're all in this together.